Hi! In today's video, we'll go back to basics with iOS and UIKit. We'll talk about the navigation bar, how it works and how do we style it properly. The navigation bar is a fundamental concept when it comes to iOS apps and their design. It answers the fundamental question, where am I inside an app? Personally, I feel it's not explaining enough, and apps that don't style the navigation bar correctly just feel unpolished. Liquid glass is coming, and it will change some of the assumptions when it comes to iOS design. Then understanding how it works today will help us to adapt to those changes. I will explain this topic focusing on UIKit. The reason for that is that in UIKit we have more control over the navigation bar and there is a better APIs for styling it. There will be time codes if you want to watch a particular section. But what I will talk about, the app screen hierarchy, the anatomy of a view controller, the anatomy of the navigation bar, how to style the navigation bar. My name is Felipe and I am an iOS developer with more than 10 years of experience based in Norway. Subscribe to my channel for more Apple development content. Okay, let's start with the app screen hierarchy. Most apps use several screens to present their functionality and we structure the code in several screens as well. For any non-trivial app, we don't want all the features of the app in one screen. Given that we are dealing with multiple screens, how do we move from one screen to another? And just the fact that there is a certain transition between screens, it means that there is a hierarchy of screens. We have three main ways to navigate between screens. Let's take a quick look at them. Tab. In most apps, the main screen is one that uses a tab view controller. This controller will host a determined number of screens usually less than five, and have them in memory at the same time. But only the active tab will show on the screen. It maintains its states via the tab bar, and that is placed on top of the content of each screen. Navigation controller. The easiest way to think about a navigation controller is a stack of screens. You start with the initial screen. Then, when navigating to another via the push transition, the new screen will be put on top of the stack of the view controllers of the navigation controller. This means we can stack as many screens as we want as we need them. Then we can pop screens, effectively releasing the memory and going back to the previous screen. Its state is shown via the navigation bar, as each view controller can display a tile. Sheets and full screen. They put content on top of the current screen, either partially or fully covering the existing content. The difference to pushing to the navigation controller is that these presentation types will overlay its contents on top of it. Then the state won't be related to the navigation controller at all. Whenever we present via a sheet or a full screen page, I suggest to wrap the content that we want to present in a UI navigation controller. Then, if we present a screen that has a button that knows to navigate to a third screen via the push presentation or on a sheet or full screen, that button will always work. That won't be the case if you forget to wrap the screen with a navigation controller, so it's a good rule to follow. Combining containers. As I mentioned with the sheet and full screen presentations, we should wrap the content in a navigation controller. That's normally the case with each tab of a root tab view controller. Since the screens in a tab view controller are kept alive, this means each tab can maintain its own navigation controller state, which we can observe if we navigate down to two different tabs and then change in between those tabs. Then, for any of those screens, the combination of the navigation and tab bars inform the user where you are, which is also related to where you can go from this screen. That was the topic of the excellent .dc talk uh, from this year, the same foundations from idea to interface. With that in place, we know about screens and how those screens relate to each other. Let's take a closer look at screens, represented by view controllers in UIKit. Anatomy of a view controller. For the view control implementation of a screen, we need to consider the following parts. The navigation bar, the tab bar, and the safe area content between those bars. The safe area is where we display mostly the unique content of a screen. Of course, in most cases, the available safe area is not enough to render all the content, so it's quite, quite common to have a third common element to all view controllers, which is a scroll view, which to typically scroll vertically. Here the navigation bar provides a great service, since it's on top of the scrollable content, it doesn't scroll away when we swipe, and if we configure the title correctly, the navigation bar shows where you are. If we didn't use the navigation bar for any reason, then scrolling we won't have the context of where we are, making the app feel unpolished. So for each view controller, we need to keep in mind the navigation bar, the tab bar, potentially, and the scrollable content. Now let's look at the pieces that make a navigation bar. 
anatomy of the navigation bar. The navigation bar has three main areas. The leading items, the title view and the trailing items. Additionally, we can have a navigation prompt that sits on top of the previous three pieces. Normally, in the leading area, we would find the back button. The trailing area would have a bar button, if any, but more interestingly is the title view. The title view by default will show the title of a view controller set on its navigation item title property. It's also possible to completely override the title view with a custom view, so we would have more flexibility on what we will render in the navigation bar. New on iOS 26, we will have a subtitle and a large subtitle to customize if we want to as well. Each view controller owns a navigation item and the navigation controller uses a navigation item of each controller presented in the navigation stack, using the topmost view controller's navigation item to populate the navigation bar. The interesting part is that the navigation item is exclusive to a concrete view controller, while the navigation bar is shared within view controllers in a navigation controller. Now with the concepts clear in our mind, let's look at how to style the navigation bar using UIKit. First, we need to understand some variations on how a navigation bar can be rendered. Are we using large titles or not? Is the size normal or compact? The normal size is the most common one, but the compact size can be seen on the iPhone while rotating to a landscape position. What about the scroll state? Here we have the scroll edge state and the standard state. The scroll edge state was a bit difficult for me to grasp, but essentially means the scrollable content underneath is in the initial position. So the top edge of the scrollable content aligns with the bottom of the navigation bar. If this is not the case, as we start scrolling down the content, we would see the standard appearance. UI navigation bar appearance. The main way to style the navigation bar is the class UI navigation bar appearance, which basically has this interface. Here we can adjust the title or large title properties, the button appearances, the back indicator, etc. In here we can also customize the background color and the effect of the navigation bar, as UI navigation bar appearance inherits from UI bar appearance. There are many possibilities, so always remember to check the available properties in Apple's documentation. But how do we access this appearance object? We have two options. Setting the appearance globally. The first way to style the navigation bar is globally. We can access the navigation bar from a view controller's navigation controller's navigation bar property. With this navigation bar, to access the appearance, we use the four main properties. Standard appearance, compact appearance, scroll edge appearance, and compact scroll edge appearance. These properties have the type of UI navigation bar appearance optional, except that the standard appearance is the only one that is not optional. This is great, as we can either have different appearances for the different states of the navigation bar, or the same appearances for all of those states. First, we select the navigation title, and this is how it will be rendered. Then we create the navigation bar appearance value and configure it with the opaque background. That allows us to set up the background color to system red. Nothing will happen because we need to assign that style. In this case, we use the navigation controller, navigation bar, scroll edge appearance, and we set our appearance to that. Once that is set, we can customize other things like the title text to white, for example, and we will see the changes immediately. Now, this is not the right way to style the navigation bar. Now, while this is possible, normally it's not an approach I would recommend, unless by design we have a very uniform navigation bar across the app. And if you do style the navigation bar globally, do it early in the life cycle of the app, like in the app or in the layout, and use the UI navigation bar appearance proxy in that case. What we don't want is that a view controller that implements a screen does override to the navigation bar globally, especially one that is presented later in the app, as the styling of other screens would suddenly change after visiting this particular screen, which would make the app feel brittle in terms of UI. Normally, we would like to style the navigation bar locally. Let's see how we can achieve that. Setting the appearance locally. To style the navigation bar locally, what we can do is to access the view controller's navigation item. The navigation item contains the same properties that the UI navigation bar has. A standard appearance, compact appearance, scroll edge appearance, and compact edge scroll appearance. Now, all of these are optional, which is an important detail I will come back later. The idea is that customizing the navigation item appearance properties will only affect this view controller. Now, to fix what we did before, the only thing that we need to do is to not assign the appearance to the navigation bar, 
but actually to the scroll edge appearance of the navigation item instead. So we're styling the navigation bar for this view controller only. It won't mess up with the styling of other view controllers, which we can make in a smarter way by creating factory methods that return the different styles of appearance we use, so we can reuse those styles in different view controllers. But if there is global styling applied and locally styling applied, what would be the result? Let's take a look at the hierarchy of styling. First, for the UI navigation bar, the appearance properties as explained before are optional, except for the standard appearance. That's important, because by default, for example, the scroll edge appearance is nil, which in Apple documentation it says, if this value is nil, UIKit uses the settings found in the standard appearance and modifies them to use a transparent background, meaning that the scroll edge appearance inherits the styles of the standard appearance. Now, when we introduce UI navigation item into the equation, we have all its properties optional. Their purpose is to override, only for this view controller, the specific style of the equivalent appearance of the navigation bar. This concludes the theory. Let's look at some examples of styling. I have four simple examples on how to use what I have been showing. We set the navigation title, and then by default, the app will render the, the scroll edge appearance transparent and the title with a label color. Then when you scroll, you will see the standard appearance immediately, which is not transparent. In many apps, we see the navigation title is not visible until we start scrolling, like in the App Store app, for example. We achieve that by setting the scroll edge appearance with a clear text style. Now we get the expected effect with a very simple implementation via the navigation item. Here's another sample view controller with a simple title. What I want to show is that you can completely replace the view that is used in the title of the navigation bar. In this case, I have simple UI view that allows me to set a title and an icon. Notice that I will still keep the navigation title set, so the back button works as expected. Then just replacing the navigation item title view to that custom view works as expected. Finally, for another relevant example, I want to replicate what the phone app does with the navigation bar. Here I have a view controller that lists contacts, but doesn't have the title configured. I can set the title view to a segmented control directly and read when the control selection is changed, changing the selected list of contacts, exactly what the phone app does. Why not to use a custom navigation bar? Now we have seen that the navigation bar has a lot of possible customization points, elements and other concepts related to it. There are a lot of tools, use them. We want to avoid creating our own custom navigation bar. As many stock components from Apple, there is a lot of thought and care for many scenarios that you would normally need to re-implement in your own custom implementation, which more often than not would be forgotten. A simple example of the behaviors of the navigation bar. The back button. When it's long pressed, it will allow you to navigate to any view controller on the view navigation controller's stack. Even the logic of using the navigation title to populate the navigation bar, the back buttons and the list of view to go back. Also, when using the native components, we may get improvements made by Apple for free, as will be the case for Liquid Glass in iOS 26. Now that you have a better understanding of the navigation bar and how to style it, you might not need a custom implementation, which in my opinion would be like 99% of the apps. Those are the foundations of the navigation bar. Why is it important to take care of its design and implementation? Together with some concrete examples of how to style it. In the next video, I plan to fully implement the App Store-like styling of the navigation bar, initially in UIKit, and later I will try to do the same for SwiftUI, where the API are not as rich. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that or any questions about this topic. And if you haven't, you can check how I implement navigation in a large SwiftUI next. Until the next one.